I am so freaking ready for the video games that are coming out in 2023. It feels like 2022 is a year that's still kind of hated. It felt like so much of the conversation and controversy was games like Pokemon being released totally broken, or people just weirdly despising a cute cat game like Stray. But this year, it does feel like 2023 is going to be completely insane. What I want to do today is talk about the games that personally I'm the most excited about and really the games I hope don't suck. What's up gamers? Dreamcast guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. So I keep seeing these big compilation tweets where people are trying to count down a lot of the biggest projects that are about to be released. Because 2023 is, interestingly enough, a lot of these games have confirmed release dates. It does feel like going into this next year, right now I'm recording this at the beginning of January, it's bonkers how many projects actually have exact day and date release and it's not release windows. Now, check this out. Just like a couple random ones here that really strike my eye. We do know that Spider-Man 2 is coming out in fall of this year. There's rumors that it's going to have freaking co-op. I've already played 10 hours of Diablo 4. The game is fantastic. That, again, is another game that already has a release date, which I freaking love. Some of these, though, that I'm certainly just the most excited about is stuff like the Dead Space remake, which is coming out here in three weeks, and also the Resident Evil 4 remake, which is 80 days away. Already, I... I'm kind of losing my mind just because, honestly, as much fun as I had in 2022, it feels like 2023 is so many huge, big projects that we've been excited about finally freaking releasing. Stuff like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, look. I am a big proponent for the fact that we need new Nintendo hardware. The Nintendo Switch is incredibly outdated. The architecture, the hardware is archaic at this point. But I have to say, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, I feel like this is, in my mind, the last great Switch game. At least as it currently stands, like, we don't know what's coming after this. We don't know what's going to be. Maybe they are going to try and drag out the Nintendo Switch for an entire decade. But I do think this might be the final Nintendo product before they start to talk about the Switch 2 in 2024. Some of these games, though, honestly, the games that get me the most excited right now are Final Fantasy 16, which, oh boy, gosh, I can't believe that's coming out summer of next year. Every trailer we've gotten for Final Fantasy 16 has just been so freaking big and so freaking epic. I am so ready for it. There's actually been a bunch of new gameplay and stuff for Final Fantasy 16 that shows that the combat director of it is the dude who did Devil May Cry. Final Fantasy 16 is so freaking Devil May Cry-ish that I love, love, love it. I think FF16 is going to completely change the conversation about Final Fantasy. Now, let me just say right up front, my most hyped game of the entire year is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, Odyssey, this is a game that I'm a big Final Fantasy VII nut in general. I've read the books. I watched the movie. Obviously, I've watched the weird old FF7 anime that nobody even remembers anymore. I've beaten the games. I've platinumed them. They're saying directly that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is producing rapidly. It is developing rapidly. So I still think the chances of FF7 Rebirth there is a lot of talk that it might get delayed. As it currently stands, it's a theoretical release for the end of 2023. This is supposed to be a winter game. I think there is a good chance that they will release it. Weirdly enough, I think the one possibility, the one part that may cause this to be delayed if Final Fantasy 16 starts selling insane numbers, like if Final Fantasy 16 somehow sells like 10 million copies or 15 million copies very, very quick, I do think they might delay 
Final Fantasy VII Rebirth just to try and milk more sales out of it. There's a lot of uh, history that shows the fact that sometimes companies will delay the follow-up or another game in the same franchise, honestly, not to just siphon sales from themselves. Now, What's possibly the most interesting aspect about 2023, in my opinion, is the fact that Xbox Game Pass is hopefully going to start releasing some big actual games. I'm not saying this as a hater or anything like that, but for the most part, I felt like I barely played any Microsoft Xbox exclusives in all of 2022, whereas now... They're finally really gearing things up. They're finally getting that momentum. As it currently stands, I think that technically Xbox owns 26 different major AAA studios, but we really haven't seen that many games from them. I mean, they're probably working on big stuff, but we haven't seen it yet. Well, now it does seem like this is supposed to be a complete banger year for Xbox. At least we can hope. There's talks about Starfield coming out around May. Obviously, Redfall coming out. There's, there's rumors of Redfall being in May, possibly Starfield in June. Everything on this list right here is supposed to be released before the end of June 2023. So this first six months is supposed to be Minecraft Legends, Forza Motorsport, Arc 2, Stalker 2, which has been getting a bunch of actual gameplay teases lately, and it looks utterly freaking spooky fantastic. It's like one of the first survival shooters that was ever made, and then now they're finally giving it a full-blown sequel. I think Stalker 2 is going to be freaking great. And then the only other one, of all these ones down here, the only one I care about is Replaced. Replaced is like a cool indie side-scroller, cyberpunk-style game. But even if we just get, personally, I think that if we just get Starfield and Redfall, and they both come out and they're in good shape, that's going to be a great start to this year. Like, if we just, in the first couple months, get Starfield and Redfall, I will admit... I am very, very, very nervous about the state of Starfield, mostly because like, I'm not saying this to be like a Microsoft hater or whatever like that. I'm just saying that as it stands, the gameplay we've witnessed about Starfield has not, it hasn't really wowed me yet. Uh, I think it looks decent, but all the trailers, even if they're at 1080p, have run at 30 frames a second. It just seems like the game needs still a lot of optimization and polish. But to be fair, it's also been a year since we've seen Starfield. So hopefully when it comes out, it is in a big playable state. I want to play this specifically on my Xbox Series X, and I'm hoping it's that, that experience that finally proves the price tag of that console. Now, some of the games that technically have a 2023 release date, I really don't believe they're coming out. Or if they are, they probably are coming out very, very late in the year. Some of these things like uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, I really don't believe that's actually coming out this year. I hope it does. I think it'd be very cool to see the final act of uh, Kevin Conroy Batman and stuff like that. Some of these games that are on this list, some of the people talking about, like, uh, here's Joe Miller. Joe Miller made this big old master list of every uh, game that personally he's excited about coming to the PlayStation 5. Some of this stuff here... I really, like, uh, Skull and Bones, I can't believe Skull and Bones is ever coming out. Like, right here, Wild Hearts is supposed to be coming out in February. I do think that's releasing. Uh, Wild Hearts is like a, basically, somebody's doing their own take on Monster Hunter. Some of this stuff, like, we still don't have any sort of release info whatsoever for the Silent Hill 2 remake. Dead Island 2, I guess, is maybe coming out in the next couple months. Lies of P, which is like a cool indie Bloodborne-style game. This year, God, it just looks so packed. But a lot of this stuff technically does not have a release date yet. Like, Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty is probably going to be awesome. But again... We really don't know when it's truly coming out. Gosh, I mean, I'm so excited about this, though. Assassin's Creed Mirage, I forgot even that was supposed to be coming out. Honestly, the DLC for Horizon uh, for Ben West called Burning Shores, that seems like it's going to be completely epic. I'm afraid that any of these games is going to bomb. I mean, I'm not super excited about Forspoken. I think Forspoken's probably going to fall on its face here in a couple weeks, but... 
I really hope Dead Space lives up to the hype. I hope Final Fantasy 16 lives up to the hype. And I really, really, really hope that Spider-Man 2 lives up to the hype. What do you guys think about 2023, though? What games are you most excited about? And which console do you think you're going to play most? And if it's PC, I mean, tell me if you have a Steam Deck. Thank you so much for watching this video, gamers. If you enjoyed it, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Man, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. In fact, people have been asking what my first review of the year is going to be. It's probably Dead Space. In fact, I might be getting it soon. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.